Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark. That right there, that's my 2014 Mustang. Now, back in 2010, Ford wanted to revise the S197 platform, and what they did was they changed a couple of the looks on the outside, and they got rid of that old three valve four six and put a five liter Coyote in there. So, with the power upgrades and the change of the looks, they also wanted to create a performance package for this thing. So, what they came up with was the track pack. Now, the only years that came with the track pack were 2010, 2013, and 2014. 13, 14 got a couple of upgrades over the 2010, and I'll go over them in a minute. So, now the track pack only came in on the manual transmission, so obviously if you have an automatic, you're probably not gonna have one. Now, the first big upgrade in the car is gonna have to do with the rear end. A stock GT comes with 331 gears. The track pack, you get 373 gears. So you get a little bit more low end torque. That way, you know, you can accelerate out of that corner and wah! The easiest way I've found to tell if you have a track package or not is to look at the front brakes on the car. So if you see the four piston Brembo brakes on the front, most likely you have the track package. Obviously you can't swap them out with the stock brakes if you really wanted to. The next obvious sign when you're looking at it is to look at the oil cap. So if you look down here, you can see that it says 5W50. So all that they're trying to state there is they want you to put a different oil in there. That way when you're driving on the track, you have better oil that will deal with the heat that you're going to be putting into the oil system. Obviously, these are not the stock wheels that are going to come on your Mustang, but they are the same size, not the same width, but the same diameter. Uh, they are 19 inches. This is what you got to have so that you can fit over those big brakes that are supposed to come on here. So if you're going to have a track pack, you got to have different suspension. What they did was they took the shocks, the struts, the sway bars, and some of the control arms off of the 2009 GT500 and put it on this thing so you can handle a little bit better when you're going around the track. All right, so let's talk about what they changed in 2013 and 2014. Back in 2010, I was talking about how you got the 373 gears in the rear. And what you had for your limited slip was you had carbon fiber plates. It kind of act like a clutch and they would like stick together. And that's how you would lock both axles together if one tire started spinning faster than the other tire. Now, what they upgraded to was called a torsion differential. Now, what that is, it's basically a bunch of gears that was, if one tire would spin faster than the other, the gears would kind of bind together and that would lock the two tires together. That way you would spin both tires and you wouldn't have a one tire fire. So, this thing is a track pack, which means you're gonna take it to the track. Well, apparently the 2010 did not do so well in the cooling department, so they upgraded a couple things in the 2013, 2014 model years. So the first thing they did is has to do with the oil. This thing driving around, the oil gets pretty hot. They put an oil cooler on here. It is the liquid to liquid style. So you're gonna have coolant running through your oil cooler, which is then gonna cool off your oil. I find that it's not as efficient as I want it to be, or it's not working as well as I would like it to. Um, I took this thing out to Thunder Hill Raceway. On kind of a warmer day, like 85 degrees, towards the afternoon, this thing, the oil would get pretty hot at the end of my 20 minute sessions, which is not what you want. So in the future, I am going to be putting an additional oil cooler on here and hopes to keep my oil temperatures down. Now, since you have an additional oil cooler on here, that thing's gonna create more heat into the cooling system. So what they did is they take the radiator out of the Boss 302 and they put it in this car. That radiator is a little bit bigger, so you have a little bit better cooling capacity. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about on this car has to do with the upgraded stability control and traction control. Now, I've driven a couple of older cars where they're very horrible systems. Basically, I would go around a corner at any speed and it would just cut my throttle. You could smash the gas all the way to the floor and it would not give you anything. Now in this thing, it'll actually let you step the back end out just a little bit before it'll take over and go, hey, you need to calm down a little bit. Now you do have the little button here. You could turn tra traction control on and off. I'll turn it back on and off. See, you can drive around with it off anyway. And if you hold the brake and hold the button for about 10 seconds or so, you can turn the whole entire system off, which is usually how I drive when I'm on the track or doing autocross. So that's basically the differences between a regular GT and the track pack. And after 2014, they got rid of it. They started calling it a performance package, which is basically kind of the same thing. A bunch of suspension upgrades, a bunch of cooling upgrades. 
Now, if you guys like the content you saw today, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more of it, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, the next time I post more videos out, you guys will know. Hey, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you guys next video.